Hey everybody, Dr. Patel here. Hope you all are doing well this Friday afternoon. It is 2.08, I apologize for being late. I'm always a few minutes late for these things, but I hope that they are well worth the wait. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking, continuing our discussions about the foot and ankle, and we're gonna be talking about ankle sprains. Last time we talked about plantar fascia, uh, plantar fasciitis and what exactly happens when that is going on when you have pain on the bottom of the foot um, in previous sessions we've talked about various different topics including the hands and wrists shoulders neck low back hips etc um, so we are going to just keep on continuing on various different topics if there's something that you want me to talk about then please feel free to reach out uh, check out all the topics that we've uh, discussed previously on our Facebook page or on our website, fxregencenter.com. And if you like this video, uh, please share it, like it, and uh, feel free to comment or reach out to us at info at fxregencenter.com. So without further ado, today we're going to continue the discussion about the ankle and foot. And specifically, we're going to talk about spraining your ankle. Um, this is probably one of the more common things that people kind of know about, experience, have heard about in one way, shape, or form in the past. Most people out there, at one point in their lives, um, most of you have twisted your ankle or uh, rolled your ankle or sprained your ankle before. But what exactly does that mean? What happens when you sprain your ankle? Um, and what's the appropriate treatment for that? I mean, you know, I, I think that the treatment for a sprained ankle, um, quite frankly, has is is so antiquated. Um, you know, the management that we do for sprained ankles is is in a lot of ways pretty old school. Um, and there's some folks that are doing things the right way at this juncture, but a lot of folks are still doing things improperly for that ankle. And, and the reality is that when we sprain our ankle, if we don't manage it in the correct fashion, then it is more likely for us to sprain that ankle over and over and over again. Um, so for a lot of you out there, especially you athletes out there, I'm sure that you've had multiple ankle sprains. Um, well, this, this talk is here for you. Um, so first, in order to understand, um, you know, what happens when you sprain your ankle, you got to first understand what's the anatomy of the ankle. You know, last week we talked a little bit about the anatomy of the foot um, and particularly the plantar fascia. Um, but what happens with the ankle joint itself? So first and foremost, what's the ankle? What's the foot? Right. What's the difference between the two? Um, so I'm going to start, you know, drawing right here on this picture. You can see this uh, unfortunate individual has a very painful foot. Uh, you know, you can tell that by the fact that it's so red and glowing. Um, it's either that or that's radioactive. But um, in this picture here, um, you can see a little bit of the anatomy, uh, the bones that are going on here. So I'm going to draw a little bit on this and then I'm going to pull up some more images so we can go through those as well. So when we look at this picture, um, you know, I'm just going to blow this picture up a little bit here. When we look at this picture, we can see um, some of the bones that are kind of highlighted inside uh, the joint. And I'm just going to outline some of those major bones here. We have this guy here that is the fibula, and we have this guy behind it that is the tibia. These are your shin bones, right? These are uh, the bones of your lower leg. Actually, this guy, the tibia, is your shin bone, and the fibula is the little guy, the partner that sits next to it. Um, and I'll draw this from other perspectives so you can really understand what's going on there. Um, this over here is the talus. Now, the talus is one of the main bones of the ankle. In fact, this is the central ankle bone that interacts with the tibia um, of the lower leg and then interacts with the remainder of the foot. Over here we have the calcaneus, which is your heel bone. And then you have the, the various different bones of the middle of the foot. 
and then you have your tarsal, metatarsal, and phalanges going on all the way down into here. But really, when we talk about the ankle versus the foot, we talk about this being essentially the foot and this being the ankle. So the ankle is actually comprised of a few different joints. The joint between the ankle, the main bone, the talus, and the lower leg bones, the joint between the talus and the calcaneus or heel, and the joint between the talus and the midfoot. Okay. Um, but when we talk about rolling our ankle, what is it exactly that takes place? When the ankle is rolled, typically it's the, that ankle is actually bent inward. So the palm of the foot or the bottom of the foot, so to speak, that actually is going inwards towards your other foot. And that's what happens when you roll your ankle. So I'm gonna show you another picture uh, to show exactly what that looks like here. So this is another picture here um, by Colton in 2004. Thank you, Google. I uh, gotta give credit where credit's due. This is actually a pretty good drawing that depicts what happens when you roll your foot. So when you roll your foot here, you can see by this beautifully drawn arrow that ultimately um, your, your, the bottom of your foot is then facing uh, your other foot over here. Um, and this whole region here, the outside of the foot ends up being stretched. Right, so the outside of the foot ends up being stretched. So that's important thought to consider because when you have these bones over here, it's not only the bones that are affected or potentially affected when you roll your ankle, um, but it's actually those things called the ligaments. So what are the ligaments? Um, ligaments, uh, if you've heard any of my previous lectures, ligaments are the duct tape that connects bone to bone. They're the supportive structures of our joints. And there's a few um, uh, main ligaments that go across uh, the, the ankle region here. You have your um, ATFL, you have your CFL, and those are the two most common ligaments that get irritated or injured in uh, the, the ankle for inversion injuries. And then you have other uh, ligaments such as those that connect uh, the fibula to the tibia that are involved in high ankle sprains that you may hear that various athletes get. And then there's also ligaments that surround the, uh, the other side of the ankle. Um, but when you look at this uh, more in depth here, bu -bu 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 I'm gonna highlight again the ligaments. You have your calcaneofibular ligament or CFL, which is between the calcaneus and the fibula. You have your ATFL or your anterior talofibular ligament, which is a ligament between the talus and the fibula again. Um, and then you have your uh, tibiofibular ligament, which is for those high ankle sprains. Now you can imagine, again, when we're going through that motion where this side of the ankle ends up being stretched, right? That these ligaments over here are gonna end up getting torn. The most common one to get torn is actually the ATFL right here. The second most common is going to be your CFL. Okay. Now, what happens though? Are, is it always that the ligament gets torn? What does it mean for that ligament to get torn? Um, and when do we have to be concerned about bigger issues like fractures that can occur? Um, so. I mentioned that those ligaments are like those, you know, duct tape connecting bone to bone. And, and if you've heard me before, you've heard me say that ligaments actually are like those thick rubber bands that surround broccoli in the grocery store. So you can imagine if these ligaments actually have a little bit of a stretch to them, they don't necessarily get torn if you have that twisting or rolling over injury. Sometimes those ligaments can just get stretched. 
Or sometimes if you have that ligament, and I'm gonna kinda uh, draw over this ligament here again. If you have this ligament here, that's like this rubber band, right? And if that gets suddenly stretched, you can get little tiny tears inside there. So when you get tiny little tears inside the fibers of the ligament, um, you know, that's when we call this a sprain and not necessarily a tear. So a sprain in the ankle is when that ankle ligament um, gets stretched and little tiny little injuries can occur uh, in there. Um, now, if a more significant tear occurs, then that's when it, it ultimately gets more concerning. Um, and it's something that we have to manage a little bit more in depth. Um, and when we talk about these different tears, we kind of try to grade out um, what level of tearing is there. Uh, uh, you know, there's various different ways of measuring this, but ultimately we have a three level grading system. A grade one is kind of like a slight stretch to that tear. Uh, a grade two, oh, sorry, a slight s stretch to the ligament. Um, a grade two is more severe of a sprain when there's um, more tearing that's occurring, but it's not a complete tearing. Um, sometimes there is more bruising that's appreciated when you have this kind of injury, uh, more swelling that's appreciated when you have this type of injury. Um, when you have this injury, you, you could feel a little loose in the ankle, but sometimes you're, you're gonna feel a little bit of instability or weakness in that ankle as well. When you have a grade three injury, that means that, that more tearing has occurred. Um, you can also kind of evaluate this scenario um, with which ligaments are torn. Is it the ATFL? Is it the CFL? Is it both, et cetera? Now, um, you know, depending on the level of the injury is how we would want to establish the care. Um, but there's a couple other factors to consider. When you have more severe of a tear, um, let's say that uh, this, this ligament got really pulled hard, um, sometimes you can actually get injury to the bone as well. Uh, you can get an injury to the bone where that ligament is actually attaching uh, to the bone. So for example, if you look at where this ligament right here is attaching onto the bone right here, um, this ligament, if it pulls suddenly really hard over here, um, then a piece, a little small nugget of that bone can actually get broken off, and that's called an avulsion injury, avulsion injury. Um, in addition, if you have a big enough twisting of the ankle, you could actually have more substantial little fractures that occur in the bone as well. Um, since this ligament is relatively strong, you can end up having actual fractures in things like the fibula over here. Um, and and uh, you, you can have injuries to the talus over here if it's a high ankle sprain and this ligament is pulling abnormally at this talus, although that is not as likely. Um, how do you figure out if you have a fracture or not? You know, is it necessary to get an x-ray all the time? Uh, well, the answer is it's actually not necessary to get an, uh, an x-ray for all of these ankle sprains because you know, if it is a grade one or grade two ankle sprain, an x-ray is really not gonna show much, nor is it necessary for you to go through that extra radiation, right? Um, but if you're suspicious of a fracture, well, that's a situation where an x-ray may be more warranted. What are the signs that we have more fracture? Now, believe it or not, swelling in itself and even bruising is not necessarily some, a, a reason for you to be suspicious of a fracture or a broken bone. Um, but there's a couple different things uh, that, that uh, could, could help us gauge if a fracture, uh, if an x-ray is necessary. Uh, there's a thing called the Ottawa Ankle Rules that basically um, outlines some specific guidelines to say, do you or do you not need to have an x-ray? Um, one of the major things from those Ottawa, Ottawa Ankle Rules is if you're able to walk on it, um, yeah, pain notwithstanding, but if you're literally not able to put pressure onto the foot because of pain, 
um, then, and, and particularly if you're not able to walk three or more steps, um, then that may be a concern um, of a fracture having taken place. A super simple way of us, you know, evaluating if the bone may be involved and not just ligament as well, is even, you know, identifying, um, you know, identifying uh, this bone, the fibula, uh, which is kind of that, that nubbin or that bump that's on the side of the ankle, and, and tapping along that bone and, and along the length of the bone, up the lower leg. If any of that tapping starts causing radiating pain into the ankle or any of that tapping causes substantial pain, then that might be a situation where the bone itself is involved. But again, swelling, bruising, um, you know, in the absence of those types of things is not something that we should be overly concerned about. In other words, it's not something that we need to run and right away get an x-ray um, and that we should be worried about a fracture. If you can't walk, you know, uh, three steps, if, if you're feeling that, you know, pain with, with just gently tapping on the bone itself, well, then that's a circumstance you may want to get an x-ray and see if there's something uh, more serious that's going on. Um, so now that we know the anatomy a little bit and now that we know what exactly occurs when we have a, a sprain of the ligaments, potential tears, potential fractures, what exactly is it that we do about it? Um, so conventionally, historically, um, when, you, when you twisted your ankle and when you went to your doc, or if you look up, you know, ankle sprain treatment, um, you know, when, when you look that up on Google, the, the typical things that people talk about are, are like immobilization of the ankle, um, uh, rice, right, rest, uh, ice, compression, elevation, um, taking medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to, to decrease the inflammation, um, and, and immobilizing, right? You know, getting in a walking boot or a cast or wrapping that ankle up so we're not moving it um, and, and going from there. Non-weight bearing, right? A lot of docs back in the day would just, you know, regardless of if you did or did not have a fracture, would, would put you in a boot and get you non-weight bearing, meaning not putting any of your weight through that ankle. But we're realizing that, that that's the kind of stuff while you end up healing from the injury in the sense that your pain gets reduced, the swelling gets reduced, um, the actual healing may not be taking place efficiently. Um, now, what happens with that is that we're not giving the body the opportunity to heal. And the problem with that is that's setting ourselves up for re-injuring that ankle again. Now, again, we just need to take a step back and recognize the, the different variations of injuries that are taking place, right? Is it a grade one, slight sprain, grade two, grade three, is there a fracture involved? If we are suspicious of a fracture, we may need to go down the route of immobilization, making sure that that bone actually heals. But in the absence of a fracture, in the absence of a fracture, and even sometimes when there is a fracture, we don't necessarily want to immobilize entirely. And we don't necessarily want to go through that whole anti-inflammatory protocol that involves those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So, what, what do I mean? Why? What, what should we do then, right? The reason that we want to pump our brakes with that old school mentality is because if we do that when we're just talking about a grade one or a grade two sprain, then we're running the risk of not letting the ligament heal the way that it should be. What do I mean by that? That ligament is a dynamic thing. That ligament is those thick rubber bands that surround broccoli in the grocery store, and it should be going through some stretching, elongating, and, and uh, uh, you know, mobile motions. Um, but if you completely immobilize that, that ankle, then that ligament is going to heal in a position that it's not meant to heal in. And it's in those situations where scar tissue may form, or that that ligament does not heal the way that it should, and then it's more lax, it's more loose, and it's not um, you know, mechanically doing the things that it should be doing. 
Um, and that's what leads to us having multiple sprains over our lifetime because you know once it's sprained, once it's injured, it's gonna be easier for it to injure again if it doesn't heal correctly. Um, that also plays into the idea of not necessarily taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? Because inflammation, that swelling that's occurring in that ankle is actually the first part of the healing process. Inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation should come, but it should go. And it's really, when we think about the healing uh, uh, stages, that first healing stage of inflammation for any wound, any injury, really takes place over the course of several days. So if you have inflammation that's going on and it's just gradually decreasing over several days, well, that's actually not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, that could be a good thing that's your body's natural healing response. Ice might be okay, right? If you're having a ton of swelling and it's really uncomfortable, then ice may be beneficial for just decreasing the swelling from being too much. But even typically, I don't necessarily ice it right away when it immediately occurs. I kind of let that inflammation settle in because again, that's the body's natural healing response. Um, rest could be very appropriate for a few days. Elevation to, again, reduce some of the extra swelling may be perfectly ab appropriate. Um, but ice and compression, not necessarily. And, and restriction, complete restriction or immobilization of the joint, really only if it's absolutely necessary. Um, when people have lingering pain or dysfunction from an ankle sprain, a lot of times what people end up doing is, again, taking those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but people will do cortisone injections uh, into the ankle joint or around the ligament. Um, I don't typically recommend these cortisone injections for patients in these type of circumstances. And the reason for that is that cortisone, while it does strongly decrease inflammation, cortisone also negatively affects the healing process and in fact may cause damage to soft tissue structures. So for that reason, I don't typically recommend cortisone for these type of circumstances. Instead, the mainstay of care is, you know, perhaps, um, you know, again, grade one, grade two, different than grade three and, and, and fractures. But when you're in that grade one, grade two category, um, you know, some rest and, and ice and some Tylenol instead of ibuprofen uh, could be perfectly reasonable. Um, and, and then actually getting back into moving getting back into walking as tolerated because if you are walking in a manner that you're supposed to be walking well then the ligament is going to know how to heal appropriately so these are the things that we want to consider when we're thinking about those smaller sprain conditions so when do you see medical care right when is it more concerning when is it something that you want to get checked out for Again, those circumstances when you feel like there may be a fracture involved, that's a, you know, go right to your doc and, you know, perhaps get an x-ray, see if that is necessary to determine if more uh, substantial um, treatment is necessary. Um, but if you're not quite suspicious of a fracture, um, how do you know if you do or do not need to get some medical care? Well, um, let the swelling be the guide. Let the bruising be a guide. Because if there's substantial swelling and particularly bruising, well, that's when there might be more tearing occurring than not. And if there is bruising, and, 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 and that bruising, by the way, doesn't necessarily even sit at the ankle. You could see bruising across the foot because gravity pulls that blood down. Um, but if you see that, then that's a circumstance that, you know what, it doesn't hurt to get that checked out may or may not want to get an x-ray in those circumstances but a physician particularly a sports medicine physician um, can take a look at this type of situation and say all right is this uh, something for us to be concerned about um, do we need to do something like a diagnostic ultrasound which does not have radiation and which can readily look at things like uh, the atfl and cfl ligaments can see if there's swelling see if there's issues going on um, that could be something that's really helpful at figuring out, all right, what's the best treatment, treatment strategy? And if you've had recurrent ankle sprains, 
if you've you know this isn't the first one but this is multiple that you've had or you've healed from your ankle sprain but you still feel a little unstable in that well that's a circumstance that you want to get checked out sooner than later in my opinion and the reason for that is um, getting ahead of the ball with things like the appropriate physical therapy to strengthen the muscles and tendons around the ankle joint, but also potentially uh, some various injection treatments like prolotherapy, sugar water injections, or PRP, platelet-rich plasma injections, can be done directly to those ligament structures to actually strengthen those ligaments. Because physical therapy and exercise can do a really great job at strengthening all the muscle structures around there, um, but ligaments only heal with time after initial injury. Um, and after it's an old injury, um, the exercise can't heal the ligaments necessarily. So that's where injection treatments that invoke your body's ability to heal come into play. So overall, you know, to kind of recap where we are, an ankle sprain, rolled ankle or twisted ankle occurs when your ankle rolls inwards, your, your, the bottom of your foot ends up facing your other foot. Um, the outside of the ankle ends up getting stretched and one or more ligaments gets injured. The most common ligament to get injured is the ATFL. Second most common is the CFL. And those ligaments um, can get merely pulled right? They're those thick rubber bands, so they can either get pulled or stretched. They could get little micro tears in them, all of which call, uh, fall into the grade one category. They can get a little bit more substantial, but not full thickness tearing, which could be in grade two category that in involves uh, more swelling and bruising, or it can get more significantly torn, falling into the grade three territory. Um, more severe trauma or injury can also include little injuries to the bones like avulsion fractures where the ligament pulls a little piece of the bone off or more substantial fractures can occur as well. We're more suspicious of fractures or injuries to the bone um, when you can't take more than three steps um, on that ankle or if you're tapping on that bone and it causes substantial pain. And those are circumstances that you wanna see a physician earlier than later and potentially get an x-ray. With the other situations, you really only want to get to uh, worrying if you have substantial bruising, swelling, um, or if you have repetitive injuries. But otherwise, it's a matter of taking a painkiller like Tylenol and not necessarily an, uh, anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, um, and, and actually getting back to moving, back to walking, and back into exercise, physical therapy to strengthen the muscles around the ankle joint. So I hope that all made sense. Um, you know, if you have any questions about it, it looks like we do have a few questions here. Kathy says, hi. Hi, Kathy. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, why is it high ankle sprains take longer to heal? So the high ankle sprains that involve the fibula and the tibula, tibia, um, uh, basically those ligaments that are connecting those bones, with every step that we're taking, there's shear that can take place between those bones. Um, and especially since those bones go all the way up to the knee as well, we're now talking about two different joints that are involved with even a ligament sprain down at the ankle. So um, the, the motion of these areas um, make it a little bit more precarious for these ligaments to heal. And sometimes you have a combination of those ligaments plus the ligaments lower down. So that's what makes it uh, more difficult for uh, an ankle a high ankle sprain to uh, uh, heal quickly. Um, and that's what Brantley has. I'm sorry to hear Brantley, but ho hopefully we can get you going in the right direction. Um, Michael Hahn says he needs my help. Hit me up, Mike. Um, hit me up and I can uh, help you out. Um, Ara says, how expensive is prolotherapy injection? My ankle might need that. Prolotherapy is, is uh, typically relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, uh, basically a few hundred dollars is what most people charge for prolotherapy. Um, and it could range uh, depending on how uh, uh, aggressive we need to be, um, how many sessions we need to have. Sometimes prolotherapy, um, since it is a uh, more lighter treatment, can take multiple sessions for us to get better benefit versus PRP can 
um, be limited to one or two sessions, um, but is a little bit more involved of a process. Um, but if you have questions about costs, particularly at my clinic, please feel free to reach out. Um, my patient care coordinator is wonderful. She can answer all of your questions regarding costs for various different things. Um, and you can reach us at info at fxregencenter.com. Um, but I hope uh, that that all made sense. Um, you know, if you have other further questions, again, feel free to comment more. I'll be checking in on those comments. You can DM us um, or you can, again, email us at info at fxregencenter.com. Talk to me if you have questions about your ankle um, or other joints, uh, your spine, your neck, your knees, whatever it is. And if you have specific topics that you want me to cover on future dates, then please, please reach out. Um, if you enjoyed this, please like it share it. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great weekend and a happy Halloween.